England back on track here in the Six Nations 2021. 41-18 bonus point win over Italy. Probably meets expectations. Don't know if it exceeds them, seeing as France put 50 on them last week. They conceded a few more points than the French, but you can't really complain with a 41-18 victory. England certainly varied it up a bit from what we are used to seeing them in recent times, so it was good to see them throw the ball around a bit. And... Um, yeah, overall pretty entertaining game. Unfortunate injury to Jack Willis. Seemed pretty horrendous. Um, but yeah, overall, a pretty fun watch. Good to see the Italians throw the ball around a bit. But for the most part, the game wasn't in, uh, in any doubt. So yeah, not a heck of a lot in the way of tension, but certainly an entertaining match. I'll go over some of the key points, the stats... And uh, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how the game went. Did England meet or exceed your expectations or did you find them disappointing in any way uh likewise the italians the italians actually started off pretty well pretty exciting uh monte iwane got a the first try of the game down the left wing uh very good little play vani got it to garbisi who got it to trua who got it to uh iwane on the left wing good hands uh england will be a bit disappointed to concede that one early they did miss the conversion from out on the sideline england had conceded a few penalties to start with so 5-0 to the italians first blood there wasn't really much chance of it upsetting england in terms of like i don't know putting them on the back foot enough to to really worry about the game i don't think maybe if england go down 10 15 points to italy maybe you start to worry about five points Still infinitely doable. Um, but Italy were looking to play really fast. And we saw a bit of that last week as well. They didn't want to muck around. Which is, uh, it's good for them. Franco Smith has them playing as quick as they can. They were trying to do quick lineouts and whatnot. Um, England's execution early on was a little bit rusty again. Passing into touch. Um, interestingly, when England got a chance to kick a penalty right out in front on seven minutes. They took it. Which was maybe a bit of credit to the Italians. Um, England go into this one knowing you need to get a bonus point win, but they still opt for a three because they're five points behind. So they, they kick it to make it 5-3. And then Italy, first real taking their foot off the gas, they um, they kick it out from the restart, which is pretty disappointing because you don't need to be giving England any free attacking platform. And about five minutes later, uh, Johnny Hill gets the first try for England on 14 minutes. Uh, they've been going phases, and this time they've been turning down threes, which they could have opted for. Uh, it was an interesting one because you couldn't really see the grounding on the camera, at least on the angle that they showed me when I was watching it. Uh, but the ref was literally right there. So he um, he gave that one. He was pretty happy with it. And uh, yeah, they did miss the conversion, though. Farrell missed the kick that he would have normally gotten all day long. But the Italian guys put him under pressure by, by charging him down just enough to make him push it wide. So... Um, it was 8 points to 5 with England in front rather than 10-5. Italy took a penalty on 19 minutes to make it uh, 8 points apiece. Kawandeki got penalized at the breakdown, so 8 points apiece after 20 minutes. If you're an Italian fan, you'd probably be pretty happy with that at Twickenham, to be fair. Um, 21 minutes, England, remember I said they were kind of trying to throw it around a bit more. Uh, from a line-out move inside England's 22, they got it to Young's and he tried some inside ball, but he threw it to nobody. And I was thinking, man, I wish Harry Randall was playing. I'm not sure if that game suits Youngs. You guys who watch the Premiership will have to let me know a bit more. Like I know, I know people always give him stick for being slow, but I know I do rate the guy for being able to like put the ball like on a string. He can put it if he's kicking, if that's the game plan. You know, he can kick it just next to the touchline and keep it in. So either it bounces into touch or he puts the defending player under pressure. He can be tackled into touch. Likewise, he can drop it just outside the 22. He's got a real knack for doing that, but little inside balls to an oncoming rushing player. I don't know that that was really his thing. Maybe if it is, you guys let me know. But I've seen enough of um, of Bristol to know that Harry Randall's a pretty good sniping runner and a good passer. So... Uh, either way, it was just a missed chance, and um, I was missing Harry Randall at that point. But anyway, they were still to score some points not, not too long after. I did write that England were looking to rush it a wee bit, um, but Slade did almost pounce on a loose ball, so the rush play seemed to be maybe not being executed perfectly initially, but it was certainly uh, keeping the, the pace of the game moving. Um, 25 minutes, though, 26. Uh, Watson does score. What's a pretty great try. 
England essentially go from sideline to sideline with their play. They're all the way out on the left wing, and then they go all the way to the right. Watson finds space, cuts back with a with a great line to to make sure the defenders uh, caught flat-footed. And um, they make it 15 points to 8. There did look to be a wee forward pass in the build-up to that one. Was it Slade with the quick hands? Yeah, I know people say Super Rugby's got some forward passes, but that one was maybe worth a look. They took the conversion pretty quickly anyway, so uh, no chance to have a look at it. But anyway, uh, 29 minutes, England go 11-plus phases. There was really quick recycle ball. The Italians managed to get out of jail with a with a breakdown penalty. Meyer was the man who forced the penalty. I thought Billy V was actually making his presence felt a wee bit more. He got a bit of stick last week for being a bit of a lazy runner, being uh, out of like match fitness kind of thing. But he was doing charge downs, um, making the, the scrum halves life, you know, difficult when uh, when the ball was coming out the back of that ruck for, for Italy. He was trying to trying to get on it. I don't know if he was told you're going to be subbed just before the hour, so really go hard, or whether he was just upping his work rate. But it was, it was certainly pleasing to see. Uh, Slade at one point was just caught by Monte Iwane as he was looking to make a break and I think that was from Billy V's charge down as well so yeah certainly making the Italians guys uncomfortable uh, but they both sides looking to play at pace really and uh, Johnny May who was again another guy criticised in last week's performance for a couple of big errors uh, he squeezed in the corner right before half time disappointing one because the Italians kind of coughed up a turnover inside their own half like with 20 seconds to go which is not really what you want to be doing when you're playing England at Twickenham you want to be playing I don't know cautious sensible but maybe that's just their thing caution to the wind uh but May goes airborne in the corner like it's a proper proper wingers try it might get try of the week on the Six Nations voting thing that they do but he's like the ball's literally just starting to fall out of his hands but it's still in contact with his fingertips it's it's picture perfect it's an absolute wonder try gets himself airborne knowing the defender's coming across can't be taken into touch because he's in the air just has his fingertips on the ball to, to put it down in the corner it's like you can't say enough good things about it man hell of a try uh missed the conversion though and it's 20 points to eight at half time so that's what i mean england looking good few too many errors but still man 20 points to eight uh 42 minutes the italians start off again with a bit of a hiss and a roar like the same as the first half garbisi with a cross kick to tiwani and he has a big run he does have a man outside him inside him but he chooses not to pass i think he tried to take farrell but farrell managed to tackle him uh i think there was defensive cover either way uh there was a bit of handbags and um, England did concede a penalty straight in front from that play. So Italy kick it and make it 20 points to 11. Even 20 points to 11, I know that's kind of getting within touching distance. You're still pretty confident England's going to score a few tries. Um, and sure enough, they did. Again, the Italians maybe, I don't know if it's a bit naive or just a bit slow to the ball. Like at one point, Vani, he looks like he's going to pass. He has a little run. He again, maybe shapes the pass, but decides to run it in. And the Italian guys get there to you know, to to keep the ruck ball alive, but nobody acts as nine. Nobody steps in because Varney's at the bottom of the ruck, and Johnny Hill just comes around when the ball pops out and just grabs it. Like good, quick thinking from him. But the Italians, you can't be doing that kind of stuff, man. That's those small errors that will just add up and cost you against like an elite team. Um, Watson gets another try on 49 minutes, and again, if you're Italian, it's a bit of a heartbreaking one. If you're England, you know that Watson's got this kind of thing in him. Uh, the Italians are attacking in the Italian in the England 22, and uh, Watson just reads a Garbisi pass, and he has just gone from 22 to the post. They do chase him, but you're not going to catch him, man. And it's 27 points to 11. The TMO did have a check to see that like Farrell hadn't taken out Varney, but it was the ultimate. There's nothing in that. Like, he maybe bumped into him after he'd passed the ball, but he didn't smack him. He didn't really push him to the ground. It was just a bit of a bit of minor contact. But, man, did they look at it for a long time. I know they had to look at it because if they if they kicked the conversion, then the try is officially awarded. So they had to have stopped the game and have a look at it, but it just felt like an unnecessary delay. Maybe Farrell getting a bit of special treatment, like in terms of more focus on him. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 59 minutes, a huge England scrum, some more handbags. Robson had come on by that point for Ben Youngs, and he went close because he took the 
he took the penalty with a quick tap and he's he's lively i do like the look of him um good to see him get like a proper 30 minutes and uh eventually willis gets gets the try on the hour mark um he goes to the right of the ruck one time they recycle the ball one more phase next time he goes left just dots it down like our bc actually spots it he sees it coming and he takes the spot next to uh varney who's also next to the ruck but man he's just too wily a loose forward's gonna get through a nine and ten most days of the week uh so that was 34 11 but then unfortunately like five minutes later a blood curdling scream from jack willis man he's in there at the breakdown trying to compete for a turnover he gets cleaned out but as his body moves i think his leg just gets stuck and it twists it's horrendous and the commentators mentioned it because there's no crowd you can hear that scream absolutely loud and clear oh it's gonna stick in your mind if you heard it man it was horrendous he's clutching at his knees rolling around on the ground like oh god i don't know how long he's gonna be out but it'll be a while because that was literally one of those ones that makes you just you know the, the hair stand up because it's it's just so terrible um wish him all the best but he had to be stretched off game stopped for a while while the medical people did their thing um and actually uh, about a minute later alan a minute later in terms of the clock time but five six minutes later in terms of real time maybe 10 uh tomaso allen gets a try on 66 proper proper good try from italy as well this one really well worked um varney takes it to the line i think he gets it to mori who like busts the first tackle and gets the ball away to allen who's the supporting runner great try makes it 34 18 and 34 18 on the scoreboard for italy at twickenham is still looking pretty respectable uh but then daly gets one out on the left wing huge cutout pass from robson again like i thought he was good when he came on huge cutout pass cut out about three of the england guys and i think daly was the fourth guy um yeah 41 points to 18 that's the way it finishes ford also got held up right before um full time so they could have had another one italy won a scrum penalty five meters out from their own line at the death they did decide to, to play it but they didn't really get anywhere eventually more goes into touch but good initiative for them to not just want to kick it out um but yeah 41 18 some good tries man like i mentioned may's one watson's one what's both of watson's ones really alan's one was pretty good i mean yeah lots of good tries all around not any tension in terms of the result but certainly some good skills from both sides uh possession 59 41 to england much better numbers compared to last week territory 60 40 run meters 9 20 to 5 22 uh, six nations always has those the official six nations stats keepers always have those numbers way higher than i'm used to didn't feel like that high i think espn had it like 500 300 but yeah six nation stats have it 900 500 either way uh lots of run meters uh, in terms of both sides really but especially england of course tackling percentage italy is actually higher than they were last week they were in the 70s this week they're at 86 percent which is pretty decent for a for a test match now they still conceded 41 points so it doesn't look that good but you think like may's try watson's intercepts and even watson's cutback try nobody got near them to make a missed tackle so sometimes when england got those tries it was just clean breaks and they did have 11 of them 11 to 4. i think they don't think england had any last week against scotland i know it's a different kettle of fish but still uh very pleasing for them to see that um penalties conceded 12 to 11 i guess if you're concerned one thing from england if three of those were at the scrum three of their 12 so maybe that's one area where they want to work on because italy's scrum i don't know if it's known in the six nations as being a particularly powerful one not anymore so yeah maybe that's one area of slight concern and handling errors 18 by england six by italy so italy actually cleaned up their handling like i think they were 11 last week so to go down to six is not too bad england at 11 is maybe a sign of them throwing the ball around a bit more their kicks from hand was down from 35 to 27 so less kicking more passing more handling errors but um yeah as i said that we're trying to play the game quick so sometimes that meant more handling errors than what you would initially expect individual sinclair gets man of the match interestingly interesting choice um he has 40 run meters for a prop which is a good effort three from three tackles five passes one pretty slick pass to johnny hill i think uh watson 160 run meters beats six defenders etoja has 13 from 13 tackles and wins two turnovers more like what we're used to seeing from those england guys um you are near four italy has 96 run meters and beats two defenders bg has 16 from 16 tackles lazaroni 14 from 14 so some of the guys certainly stood up bg mentioned it in the post match that 
Um, you know, it's just on the scoreboard, it looks pretty bad, but there's still some pleasing stuff. But still, 41 points to 18. Good result for England. Bonus point win. Um, apart from the Willis injury, seems to be relatively pleasing. Anyway, uh, you guys let me know your thoughts on this one. How did you think the game went? Remember, Italy, we've got the, the fellow, was it fellow week next week? No games next week. Uh, Italy will have, who is it? Ireland at home and England will travel to Wales, unbeaten Wales away. So that could be uh, some interesting stuff. But yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on this one. How do you feel both teams went? And um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later. If you guys are interested in getting yourself some England rugby gear, they are having a 15% off sale. They've got the 150 years anniversary gear, which I think is kind of limited time stuff. They've got regular England jerseys and um, yeah, what can I say? Always good to have a sale. Uh, check the link in the description, guys, and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.